In Parsha Shemosha, we are introduced to this incredible leader, Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, of course, other than one parsha in the rest of the Torah, he will, his name will be mentioned in every single parsha from here on in. And what's amazing about this unbelievable person, and that didn't have to happen necessarily, Moshe Rabbeinu did not have to be, even though he had already accomplished a lot, he had achieved an amazing level of commitment to the Jewish people, relation with God, he was already a prophet because the burning bush that was off on the side, the Sephardim says very clearly, was a prophetic vision. It was something very holy and very uplifting and very supernatural about it that only prophets get to see those things. So already in, in that particular moment in time, Moshe Rabbeinu, having killed an Egyptian, having stood up on behalf of the Jewish people, sharing in their pain, empathizing in all of what they're going through, ready to face down Paro and escaping Paro's execution, was at a very, very high level. But it's fascinating to see what exactly was the turning point that turned him from Moshe to Moshe Rabbeinu. Very important concept. Says the Pasuk, that Moshe Benu was off on his regular day, doing his regular stuff. He's a shepherd in Midjan. We know he ran away. He's hanging out in Midjan. And he's a row at Zon. As you can see from the Psukim, this morning just explains it, but the Psukim really indicated already that there's, there's a Malach Hashem appearing in this fiery bush. He's looking off on the side, trying to examine what is going on here. A very, very supernatural phenomenon. Something is burning, and yet it's not getting consumed. The words are so, so profound. Just you look at the words of the Torah, Rabbi Isai, and how this speaks to us in so many points in our lives, and really every single day of our lives. Because we're not sure when we are going to have this type of moment. There are these types of emotional moments in everybody's life. Or the stakes might not be as high as they were by Moshe Benu. But make no mistake about it, in our lives, that's all we have. We have our moments. We have our opportunities. We're not, we're not here to be Moshe Benu. We're here to be the best people we can be with the opportunities and with the abilities and the talents that Godish Baruch Hu gave us. Everybody say, we could be quite great. We'd be, we could be quite amazing. In fact, the Rambam te- tells us, no, in no uncertain terms, every single Jew has the ability to be Moshe Rabbeinu. That might, that might sound laughable, Rabbi say, how in the world do I come to Moshe Rabbeinu? We might be thinking. And the answer is, if we can maximize who we are, we can rise to the challenges that we face, and we can be as committed as Moshe Benu to accomplish the goals that Akash Baruch Hu set out for him, that we can be Moshe Benu. That's what our life is about. It's about being the best we can be. So the Pasuk says, Vayoma Moshe, what amazing words, Asura no ve'eres hamara goro azeh, madu I will turn to examine this incredible phenomenon. I will turn to find out what is going on here. Because he knew that it was not simple. He knew that this was a turn to a challenging moment where he was going to be different. At the end of this turn, he was going to be different than he was before. Am I going to challenge myself? And I use this shoes very often for people when they are seniors debating about going there to Israel. Or they are young men who are just sort of figuring out their, their path in life. And it is so easy, as it was in Moshe Beno's case as well, as great as he was, it would have been so easy for him to say, you know what, I just don't have the energy, the time, the wherewithal to just do this. To make this turn and challenge who I am, trying to become a different person. I'm pretty good right now. I'm an I'm Novi. I'm seeing a supernatural event. But you know what? Baruch Hashem. 
I am who I am. I've accomplished a lot. I just, you know, I got a lot of things to do. And I'm pretty busy. I got a whole life mapped out for me. I got time to make a detour to Eretz Yisrael. I have time to make a detour about examining whether or not my priorities are really correct. I have time to really take a good, hard look at my life and say to myself, is everything that I thought from the time I was seven years old, is that really true? How smugly we were, smugly we were maybe when we were 10, 11, 12, or 3, we had, all, we had it all figured out. We all just knew the world. And maybe now there are thoughts coming into our heads that maybe challenge those thoughts, challenge those values, challenge that beautiful path that we set out for our lives that takes us right through to whatever career we have planned for us. And maybe some thoughts come in and say, you know what? I don't know, I'm really thinking about, man, eh, no, don't, don't think so much. Just keep going, just keep on going down that road. You made your plan, you have your whole career. By 26, you're going to be that. By 31, you're going to have that. By 33, you're going to have this much in the bank. It's all planned out. I got time now to take some detours to challenge who I am and to find out what life is really all about, to become the best person I could be, to make a difference in this world in a way that I could never have imagined. It's not so simple. It's not so simple because, because Moshe Benu made a decision. His decision was, I'm going to turn and examine what's happening here with this supernatural phenomenon. And amazingly, Vayar Hashem, I'm reading right from the Chumash. It's not even a forest here. This is right from the Chumash. Vayar Hashem, he saw Liros. When Hashem saw, Hashem sees him turn. Here's a man. As accomplished as he is, as good as he is, he's willing to make a turn and challenge the assumptions of his life and maybe even ratchet up a level, push himself to go even beyond that, and he's going to make that turn to see what's going on. And only then, and the world was never the same, Rabbi Sai. With those words of Moshe, Moshe, you are my man. I'm going to seek your leadership. You're my chosen person to take Klai Yisrael out of Mitzrayim. You're the person that's going to make a difference in Jewish history. It's you who's going to accomplish the vision that I have mapped out for this world. The world is here because of Torah. Who's going to deliver that Torah? Who's going to lead us to that Torah? You, Moshe Benu. Why? Because you made a turn? Because you actually went to check out that that's the reason? What's it? The, the implications are profound. We can easily just keep walking down that road and living our lives so easy. We have it all mapped out, even though you know, we get curveballs and even, even the, the, those plans very often end up not the way we thought. But we're going to let spirituality and, and God, godly challenges and, and opportunities to make a difference in the world and Jewish leadership and becoming a Talmud Chacham and maybe making an impact through a means that I can maybe never imagine for myself. Do I really want that? And I see it happening. It's not like I'm so sure about life. I know I, 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 I think I have it figured out, but do I really have it figured out? Do I really know what's really right and wrong? Do I really have all the answers? Do I not want to challenge myself to find out what it is that this world really is about? And Rabbi said, you know how many people ask themselves those questions and then decide to go right back to sleep and continue to walk straight down that road? It takes a Moshe Rabbeinu, it takes a very special person to say, you know what, I don't have all the answers. If I make that turn, I'm going to get some. I'm going to get some. It's going to become clarified. I know it. I know it in my heart. I know this is not the easy path, but it's the right path, so I must take it. I must make that turn. That's Moshe Benu, or Boy said. I remember hearing from a Rebbe Zatzal in Eretz Yisrael, those words that many of us heard over the years, Rabbi Moshe Tzayt, incredible Tamil Chachim, Rosh Hashivin, the Chavetz Chaim branch in Eretz Yisrael for many years. And how he would say to us, could you imagine Moshe Benu, had he not challenged himself, 
Had he not made that turn, he would have walked right into infamy to simply sleep away the rest of his days. In relative mediocrity, he probably would have been a great fellow. He would not have been Moshe Bain. Just another Moshe, going down the road. How many Moshe do we have in Jewish history? Only one Moshe Bain. Many Moshe's. A few in this room right now. Who will you be? Are you ready to make a challenging step? Whether it's Eretz Yisrael, whether it's a point in time when you're 21 years old or 32 years old, these moments happen, Rabbi Isai, at various moments in our life. It certainly happens when we graduate from high school. But it can happen over a week, uh, over a, a week long vacation. It can happen during an opportunity of what, what's my vacation going to look like? Well, what's my mid- midwinter break going to look like? What's my summer vacation going to look like? These are all opportunities of saying which direction do I want to go in? I joke very often before summer vacation, ah, 10 weeks off. What well, can happen never in one week? I googled last night. Just picked one subject, could have been, I could have picked 10 others, but I just happened to pick, Google one thing. I uh, wrote in, I became an addict overnight. Just see what shows up. Just one example. I could have picked alcoholic, I could have been addicted to this, addicted to that. I could have picked a lot of different things. Lost my life, lost my direction. Ruined my life in one night. It could have been gotten. Went to jail for 20 years over one night. It could have been so many different. But I just happened to pick that. And it's so frightening, Rabbi Say. How one step in the wrong direction can lead to infamy and lead to devastation that we can't imagine. How sometimes the step that we need to take is a step away from trouble. As opposed to towards spirituality. Whatever that step might be, Rabbi, say, these are the times that really make the difference in our lives. And he said, could you imagine Moshe would have walked right into irrelevance, oblivion. He would just would have walked into nothingness, never to be be talked about. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine a Jewish history without Moshe Benu? And Rabbi says, it's very fascinating. Moshe Rabbeinu, I mentioned this at the night of the banquet, Moshe Rabbeinu was, was called many names. He had many beautiful, incredibly uplifting names. The one that sticks is Moshe. We call him Moshe. We don't call him by his other names. Isn't that ironic? Because who gave him the name Moshe Rabbeinu? Bashi Baspar gave the name Kimin Amayim Mishisiu. Why of all the names of Moshe Rabbeinu do we talk about the one that was given to him by the Egyptian princess who stretched out her arm to try to get him from the water? Why not some really sublime, spiritually impactful names which she had, which, she had, which were legitimate? And Chaim Shalevit says because what defined Moshe Rabbeinu or Rabbi Sai is this point. Kim in Amayim is she see you. When Basya Bas Power of Isai extended her arm to get Moshe Bainu from that water, she extended it in a way which was really not natural and not normal. She said, I have a job to do and it does not look like I can do it. I can be somebody special. I can make a difference. The HR is so good at getting us to sort of minimize who we are and our potential. We don't want to look at ourselves. I've had people say, yeah, in four years, I didn't, I didn't, you didn't grow. You didn't grow. You don't re- we don't recognize how much we've grown. There's nobody here right now in the end of the first semester who's the same as when they walked in the beginning of the, of the semester. Every single one of you has grown. You can't even imagine. Maybe some of you know. Maybe some of you can feel it. But even the ones who don't feel it, even the ones who say, ah, it's just another five months down the tubes, chas v'shalom. You have no idea of how much you've changed and matured and grown. To us, we can see it. Sometimes when you're going through it, it's it's imperceptible. Kimina Maya Mishisi, Rabbi Say, Basya Bas Paro injected into Moshe Benu. That readiness to extend oneself. It does not look like I can pull this off, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I will get everything I've got. 
I will send that arm even though my arm is only what? Three feet? Four? And I, and I got to go 12. I got to go 15 into the water. How am I going to do this? You push yourself. You find out you're a super human being. You find out you can do super natural things. Things you thought were not possible. People have done unbelievable things. Relatively simple people. Walk the streets like you and me. But because they pushed themselves and they had a vision and a concept of what they can do and who they can be, I'm going to make that turn. And I'm going to challenge myself. I could be that person. Everybody say, it's a wonderful time. We surely have earned some time off. We certainly can pat ourselves on the back of a, after a beautiful semester. We've accomplished a lot. We've experienced a lot. We've had incredible programming. We learned a lot. We had a lot of fun, a lot of activities. And it's really, as it's about creating a certain environment, we can look back and say, whoa, I can do some stuff. I've got talents that maybe I haven't really tapped into. I'm beginning to feel them. I'm beginning to sense them. How would it be if I just decided to take the easy path? If I didn't challenge myself. If I didn't adopt the position of a Moshe Rabbeinu who was injected with this, this incredible ability of extend yourself, push yourself, challenge yourself. It was that quality that, said to, that Moshe Rabbeinu said to himself, I cannot walk by. It's maybe difficult. I didn't want to do it. At the end of the day, he didn't want to do it. He fought back. Me, a leader, I'm not a leader. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are, Moshe Ben. You are a leader. You made that turn. You challenge yourself. You push yourself. You don't know what you've got. You don't know what you're capable of. You can be that person. Rabbi said there is not one person in this room without incredible abilities and talents that change the world. Because Baruch Hu gave each and every one of us in our own way that mandate. Exactly how, exactly, the exact plan will be unfolded to each person personally as he grows. The bottom line, the, the fundamentals are there. You got to keep the Torah. You got to grow as a Jew. You got to do the mitzvahs. You got to develop your shemaim. You got to be the biggest bench you can be and the rest will fill in as we get older. But fundamentally, the real question is, as we go through life, are we ready to push that envelope? Are we ready to make that turn? Are we just ready to just sit back, have our necks touch the chair, and just keep moving the exact same direction? Because I have it all planned out. You know what? Don't bother me with grandiose ideas. I got no time. Moshe Beto also had plenty of schedules, plenty of plans, plenty of meetings. But he made that turn. Because Baruch Hu saw it, and he said, you're my man. And you're going to change the world, and forever they will always be talking about Moshe Beno. Let's make sure we have a well-earned week and a half off. Let's remember who we are, Rabbi Isai. Let's remember who we, who we are and what our mandate is. We're the Yisachar. Yisachar Hamor Gorum. We learn Torah every day. We're the Yisachar. That Chazal say never throws the load off. A Hamor is different than a Sus. A, source, a Sus, when a, a horse, when it wants to rest, throws off the load and says, Ah, vacation. Everything's away. The tefillin go away and the tzitzes go away and the learning goes away and everything goes away. Hamor... He's rovates beta mishpasayim. He's got his load. He relaxes. He has a good time. Does some skiing. Does some relaxing. Recharges his batteries, but he's not throw the load off. Because that load is his ticket to eternity. That load is exactly what is going to make him that unique person. Let's rise to that challenge, our boy. He said, "Let's know who we are. Let's believe in ourselves." Bezer Shambizoch, the Beast of Shaft, and here we are.